What we have here is a demo of an upcoming game. And here's their creator. Hello, I am Gabriel Mitchell, but I'm more well known as EV Rocks 72. And this is my baby, Lazaria. And what's the story behind Lazaria? Okay, going to like uh, the development. Yeah, the, the history uh, of the game. So basically I started this way back in like 2009. Yes, the game's been in development for seven years now. I know that I could keep making it quicker if I'm not able to. But uh, it, uh, I started nine years ago because I was just curious about game development and software. And I was also wanting to make something that was a bit better than my last game because that one got pretty darn panned. So, uh, so I just started messing around with it and started to build and build because I kept coming up with ideas. And then before I knew it, I had uh, the thing that keeps, uh, gets me out of bed every morning. That would be this right here? Yes, or the game, I mean. Yeah. And I guess the series is full, because I plan to do more after this. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, make, like some of the ideas that kind of made this kind of go on was I wanted to make an RP, kind of like, have, have an RPG where you have like kind of like generic, I, some like classes stuff, and then I put, throw something batch of crazy into there to make, to make it more unique. Or, Turn something old into something new. So, so if you're familiar with RPGs, you're like, okay, now all this works. But oh my god, that character seems to just do that. Did, did the monk just uh, shot? Or the uh, the uh, red mage character just used some uh, monk powers into a spell, <laughs> or something like that. Okay, so you so you turned a lot of the conventions on their ear. Yeah, like like uh, the party member that this one's playing is uh, Nicholas. His thing is, he plays like a rogue, so you have all the evasion and, and like movement abilities of a rogue. But he took ballet for seven years, so he so he's a dancer. So he flashily dodges everything. So he's not that stealthy, but still the mechanic of gain away from stuff, like that character, that, that type of class does. Okay. And this one's playing as Bucklet. Okay, a bit more of an obscure character, a bit more of an obscure class, but Bucklet is based off of the... Uh, I also have a picture of him over here, but Bucklet's based off of the Spellblade job class of Final Fantasy. Basically, he casts a spell on your sword and does spell damage. Bucklet's thing is, he wields buckets. He can, he has a bucket, and he can put random items, just random junk, into the bucket, and it'll change the damage. Put, uh, put a bag of spiders, poison damage and fear. Put fire orbs, fire damage. Pour water, water damage. Put uh, milk in it. Does the same as water, but if you attack a skeleton, it'll heal it because calcium. That's rather clever, actually. Thank you. So, what were some of the platforms you were hoping to get this exposed on? Right now, I'm shooting for peace, uh, peace, just PC for now. The development's been kind of small and stuff, and I don't fully know how to port to to other platforms. I have tinkered with a phone port, so if it's successful enough, I plan to port it to a phone. Because a lot of RPGs function well on the phone, and if it's successful enough, I really, really want to put it on the Switch. Mind you, I haven't done anything to get that started. Okay. So I want to figure that out after the game's out and see feedback. And if I ever start a Kickstarter related, which I'm still on the fence about, because I spend all my spare, spare time, uh, a lot of my spare time working on it, and or procrastinating playing video games. But, uh, but uh, oh, doing research. You're doing research, yeah, obviously. And working on uh, working on this, and I still live in my parents' house. I'm lucky that's mostly due to medical reasons, but still. So it's like I don't see a reason of of getting a bunch of money for the budget because it's already coming out of my pocket, and I'm the only developer. So. Yeah, it's a sole project, hence the reason it's seven years in development. Yeah. If I do do a Kickstarter, I'll probably use most of the money to hire other people to speed up the process. Because the game's only about 60% done. Okay. Uh, some of that actually came from I lost a huge chunk of the data, so I had to remake it all from scratch. Oh, wow. I actually quit, but I became so depressed not working on it. And I played now one of my favorite games of all time, Niminiki, which is a game that brought me to tears to how awesome it is. Made in a crappier version of, of the same software I use. So I just sat there and I was like, I need to go back to finishing my game. I don't care. And I went back to working on it from scratch, scratch, and I was way happy. So thanks to that game, I'm still here, and this game is still here, and now you guys are hearing about it. Well, there you go. Well, Hopefully progress continues, and... I have a ton of backups of the games everywhere. 
the three tags I put on the SD or back up on the SD card of my Wii. No. Because that's not going to disappear. Well, there you go. Now, um, how else could someone find out about this? Like, could they find you on Facebook or what? Okay. I have a uh, borrow business card. Okay. I have an uh, email on here. Can I actually zoom this in? And the game has a block. La Lazaria dash dash official at tumblr.com. All right. And I haven't started a Twitter yet, but it's been on my to-do list. So that might be coming up soon. That probably would be a good way to continue it. Uh, I'm demoing here at GavenCon, and I actually have the email list for like, the newsletter, just because I realized that I was like, okay, not everyone has a Tumblr, so this is the solution. There you go. And so far the feedback's been pretty good here. It's not, not been as positive as last year, but a lot of people still really like it. Mind you, there was a lot more people here last year, so it may just be because of that. This is a brand new demo for this year because in a year's progress, I debugged the battle system. Last year didn't have a battle system, it was just dialogue. And now, you may, may beat up or hug slimes. Well, there you go. One of the main mechanics of the game is you can kill and spare every enemy, but to try to difference myself from Undertale, it's a lot harder to do some of these things, and you need the right combination of characters to spare certain enemies. Like, you have like, all the pacifism abilities that are split up between all the characters. There's going to be 15 party members in total, not just the two that you see on here. Okay. All of them having some sort of mechanic based off of a job class and twisting it. Like, a character that appears in the demo but is not neither of these are playing with right now is Madi, the wheelchair-bound barbarian. She does the most damage of any character and has barbarian traits, but because she's wheelchair bound, she has to take like two or three turns rolling up to the enemy. Huh. So, and so, you actually took time to acknowledge yeah. that. Yeah. Hell, even when you play as her, okay, this is kind of a mild spoiler, but when you play as her and she's the only person in the party, the controls of the game changes. Because, think about it, you're not able to walk around. You actually interact with your wheelchair. Huh. Okay. And uh, there's a bit where you have to go down the staircase and she's just like... <sighs> Tries to do a butt scooch because no one's held to help her. And you had to do like a slow time event. Oh. Slowly going up the stairs, mashing the A button. Each step, she has a new combination of curse words going <laughs> to the staircase. <laughs> Some of this is based off of reality because I made her playable to vent all my frustrations. Just that That's kind of my therapy role into being wheel, uh, wheelchair bound to just be like, let me dump all the frustrations and cool things into the game. And because. She becomes playable about seven hours into the game, so you're so used to how other characters function. That hopefully gives the, gives the uh, players a good idea of how much it sucks to have this problem. So hopefully I might actually teach some people of that. There, there you go. I mean, it's using a counterculture approach, yeah. but it should get the job done. And if that doesn't work, I'm hopefully going to make it entertaining enough with all the curse combinations there. Oh, yeah. That's a big aspect of my game. One of the other gameplay mechanics to it is... Okay, the game's storyline directly references that you, the player, is a separate entity. Kind of like the game Off, if you're familiar with it. And I guess maybe one shot. Yeah, I know my references are obscure. I'm a dork. <laughs> but uh, but kind of like that in the sense of it directly references that you are your own entity. You are sent in to control all these characters from around the island the game takes place. And somehow get them to the end. They're all from different locks of life and might not get along. So you're trying to figure out how to get these characters to get along. Because they... And make sure you do it, because you can, it still plays identically to a normal RPG, including choosing what choices. But if you choose certain choices, it might make the characters suspicious to bar, bar go up. They can actually figure out that they're being mind controlled. Oh. And that's actually a way to get a game over. So oh, wow. be careful. And another thing that goes with that is every character comes from a different walk of life and background. The reason I'm demoing here at HavenCon, which is an LGTB nerd event, is I have a lot of alternative characters and LGTB characters, as well as the straight characters and whatnot. And if you kick out any of them, straight, gay, uh, gay by, by whatever, for any reasons, you'll get stuck, because you'll need all 15 characters. So if you kick out the black, the black girl for being black, you're, you're going to need to go back to her and grovel and get her back. To beat the game. There you and go. And if you can't, can't, can't accept them for the art, you can't beat the game. So I hope one of the things this can do will make people less, well, will not necessarily make people like 
uh, groups they don't like, but makes them put up with them better, if that makes any sense. I hope it's going to help toleration, if that makes any sense. There we go. Not exactly acceptance, but just the, just tolerating. I mean, it's a step in the right direction. Exactly. Another thing doing that is I'm going to try to make sure if I have any alternative character or LGBT characters, I should be saying, it affects the story deeply. One of the main characters, and this comes up early in the game, so it's not too big of spoilers, spoilers, which he's not playable in the demo, is Pit. He is the, dra the dragon paladin. I don't actually know where I have any pictures of him. Okay, the, dra the, g the flamboyantly gay, like, uh, like, uh, uh, g uh, gay dragon. He's into humans. So he learned how to shape shift, so he's less scary. Okay. And his thing is, he really wants to have kids, but he physically can't. He's a dragon and human, interest in humans and gay. And the setting doesn't allow gay adoption yet. So, and because there's a lot of young, young uh, characters in the game, because because uh, because I'm keeping that cliche with RPGs. Sorry for me a bit awkward how I'm talking, but. Uh, so he tries to be the fodder figure to them, whether they <laughs> like it or not. Oh, there you go. And one of the things that goes with this is because he's a dragon, you can see he has all these OP dragon moves, but because he's being the dad, he doesn't want to overshadow the kids. He doesn't want to <laughs> make, um, make uh, squash, uh, squash their light, so he forces himself to be the support role. He's the Claire, Claire character, even though you see the, the most like, OP shit in the list of moves he can learn. <laughs> he just refuses to select them. Even to the other characters are aware of this, it's like, good shit, fire! Why are you healing me? <laughs> Dendon does a better job healing. But I just, I just, he's actually my favorite character in the game right now. Just because I, because of that premise. But I hope that that's not tokenizing because it actually serves the story. His character relates to his, arch, uh, his uh, orientation because it directly affects how he plays. It's not just the, oh, I, hi, I'm gay, and it has absolutely no effect on the story, you know? Or the gameplay. There you go. Other characters are alternative, and it has effects like that. And I won't say much, because other characters, there's a, there's a lot more spoilers going on. But the characters that are being demoed here have something that makes them alternative, because this is HavenCon, after all. Uh, did I answer your question well? Uh, you answered more than enough. Okay. Sorry, I ramble a lot. No, you know, more information I'm very the better. Awkward, but when I get to talk about what I'm stuff I'm excited about, like the game, I just ramble. Which is useful for an interview. Yeah, you no, know, this actually helped out tremendously. Okay. So hopefully the game will come out soon, as spotless as you can get it, because. I do admit, yes, that I'm making all this from scratch. I don't know if I referenced or not, but all the art and all the music and all the dialogue is all mine. I waste so much time animating and I and so much of a productiveness. Like see how they're animated in the battle screen. Every enemy is animated and every enemy and party member takes battle damage, which affects the sprite. I'm not asking you to beat up the character, because that'd be mean. Because <laughs> because there's passive abilities and stuff, as well as as well as beating up enemies. Okay, I don't know if I made it very clear, but one of the things I'm just this differentiating from Undertale rolling to pacifist abilities is that is some enemies are ridiculously hard to kill, but are easy to spare, while others is a uh, is a uh, very easy to really very very hard to kill. They really 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 want you dead. So if you're familiar with Undertale, it's kind of like kind of like if you're going for a pacifist or genocide group, it's gonna be a lot harder. Yes, even harder than the Sans fight. <laughs> I am evil <laughs> because okay, because I started development before that game even came out. Hell, even before that game started development, because he started that in 2012 and I started in 2009. And so technically I'm not ripping them off, but because, but because that game is a lot more popular and has uh, pacifism elements, I just looked at the game and said, let me take some things that worked and do things in the completely opposite direction, just so I'm not a ripoff, you know? There you go. Or be a ripoff without even trying to. I'm a, I, I love that game, so so I don't have a problem. <laughs> Honestly, I'm more of a Lisa the Painful ripoff because some characters get combo abilities. Like I was talking about the um, the Valerina guy, uh, Nicholas. Whenever he does, oh, imagine you get a combo screen where you can input button combinations. And if you put in the right combination, he does a, a spe uh, an attack. But each of the buttons he presses makes him do a different pose. <laughs> kind of almost kind of like JoJo's, if that makes sense. Even though he's super scrawny. Yeah. And, and uh, the martial arts character also has something similar going on, but with just combo moves. She can't actually spare any enemies, 
but she's really good at fighting, and some enemies are intimidated and will run away. Which means if you're going on a genocide route, not a good idea to use her because you might intimidate some of the enemies, and if you're going on a genocide route, you want everyone dead. No survivors. Oh, there you go. And Bucklet is the bucket wielder is actually good at sparing enemies because yes, he really wants to be the hero, but he cares about the uh, monster's feelings. If you see the, if he sees the monster up, he's like, oh, how are you doing? Hugs it. He spares it by accident. <laughs> Uh, but uh, he has an equivalent of that. Because he's a deer and not, and not a human, some enemies are allergic to deers. So they might die while fighting him. So, if you're going in for a pacifist group, pretty much, you need to fit, uh, to do a pacifist or genocide group, you need to know every character back to front. And, um, and make your combination of party members jive, so no character screws anything up. So it's kind of like Undertale extra hard mode. But I plan to make it deep enough that that's going to be at least entertaining to do something like that. I was actually inspired by Metal Gear Solid because I liked that the higher, le uh, higher levels of skill and difficulty you were able to spare every enemy without fighting it. So I wanted to do something similar with an RPG with like ridiculous stat elements because you can piss off enemies, you can you can use the nude stats element to make them naked, you can, you can hug them to make them feel loved, stuff like that. Just absurd stuff. Did I derail things too much? <laughs> oh, that... That's actually quite unique, and if anything, the, ex the eccentricities are going to definitely make your game separate from others. Yeah. That way, there will be little to no confusion. I've never seen any game have a deer player character, much less one that fights with buckets and hugs slimes. That is pretty unique. Yeah. And also being the type of alternative stuff that he is, but that's going to be that's massive spoilers for his character because he has a similar thing going on with Pit, where it affects the story. Okay. So I guess. I guess create your fan theories now after the demo comes out. <laughs> well, hopefully everything works out well. Thank, uh, thank you again. Okay. Uh, are we ending now?